Hi, namaste and welcome to the World Ayurveda Day celebrations. I'm Dr. Namyata Patak. I'm a BMS MD in Ayurveda Kaya Chikitsa from India and a Vaidya scientist. I practice and teach integrative Ayurveda in California for the past six years. I'm here to share with you some of the key insights from Ayurveda and understanding of immunity that will help us on a day-to-day -day basis as we continue to live in a post-COVID world. One of the important questions that comes to our mind is, why is it that some people get infections and some people don't? And why do some people have such severe outcomes of an exposure? The response to that lies in the understanding of immunity and how it functions. The early stage immunity, when it kicks in, it does not allow a contagion to establish in the human system. And this is done by something called as an, by a concept called as ojas. An important question that comes to our mind when we are an important question that comes to our mind when we see the when we see the outcome of the pandemic. An important, an important question that arises is that why is it that some infections get established in some people and the progress to sometimes create such severe outcomes? The common response to that is the immunity and the immune function. Ayurveda understood this concept as ojas. And when we see how OGIS functions, there is an initial response and there's a late stage response. Both of these responses can be mitigated in different ways using different Ayurvedic medicines and herbs. And there's a lot of research that is coming in from India for that. Meanwhile, what we want to focus on is how do we take care of our ojas on a day-to-day -day basis without any external intervention. So I want to share with you some of the principles of Ayurvedic science that we can apply on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you see that there is an initial contagion exposure, you, we want immunity to kick in as soon as possible before the onset of symptoms. And even if there are some mild symptoms, we want the immunity to kick in and such that we do not suffer from the consequences of the disease. Now, ojas in Ayurveda is not just immunity, it's also resilience and it is also vitality. All of these three concepts lead to ojas. Now, ojas is not something that just comes to you automatically or something that you're gifted with. It is something that can be created actively on a day-to-day -day basis. So if ojas is the outcome, what are the inputs that lead to it? What are the processes that lead to it? Ayurveda understands physiology through the concept of Agni and an optimally functioning Agni eventually leads to the creation of Ojas. So whatever Ahara or food that we take in, whatever are the inputs in our system, they get processed by Agni. And an optimally functioning Agni will create sequentially good quality tissues. From one to the other, there are sequential transformations with the Agni functioning at different times. 
when all of this process is functional, you get good quality ojas. And that is a natural output. You do not have to take supplements to create ojas. Supplements are good, but they are not necessary. So how do we know and maintain this process? How do I know if my Agni is right right now? For that, we check whether we get hungry at appropriate times in the day. Do we feel light? Do we feel energetic? Do we have a good bowel movement? These are some of the key checkpoints that you can always do on a day-to-day -day basis. And you don't need to see a Vaidya for that. If any of these are not present, then your Agni is suboptimal. And you might have lack of appetite, you might have heaviness, you might have lethargy, you might not be able to think clearly, you have brain fog. Or if you see a thick coating on your tongue, or if you see your stools are not well formed, that means something is off and you need to get into a mode of correction through the diet and lifestyle. So the decision elements that prevent Ama and Kindle Agni are not just about what you're eating, but when you're eating, how much you're eating, and how you're eating. All of this wisdom lies in the Ayurvedic text, and there are multiple resources that I suggest that you look into to educate yourself about it. Two of the key uh, no-nos from what to eat perspective are simple processed carbohydrates and pro-inflammatory fatty acids in processed foods and snacks. All of the farsan and all of the ready to eat cookies, most of them have fats which are pro-inflammatory that make you not fighting fit. When I take a step further into the Agni principle, if I want to keep the Kindle, Agni kindled, there are some factors that affect my Agni that I can influence. And there are some that I cannot influence. So the modifiable factors are the ones that we can influence. For that, you have food, you have sleep, you have emotions, and you have exercise. Dr. Anu mentioned a lot about the details for food, and I would ask you to please listen to her talk well and all of the key insights that she has presented there. I want to talk a little about the other three. So one is sleep and immunity. Now sleep is, is very easily stolen from us in the daily grind. But how do we prioritize sleep so that, such that our immunity stays strong. Is there any evidence for sleep and immunity to be affected? Yes, there is. You find a much increase of uh, the, the incidence of common cold with the rhinoviruses if someone is sleeping lesser than five hours. So adequacy of sleep is pertinent for many other infectious diseases as well. So please get up feeling rested as often as possible. Try not to use the alarm clock. Try to sleep in time such, such that you wake up for the time that you're supposed to wake up. Sleep deprivation also causes insulin resistance, which, which influences your ability to fight infection. From an exercise standpoint, Exercise is one of the best ways to reduce ama. If you're feeling heavy and lethargic, you need to get moving. Once you get moving, the cleansing processes are reestablished in the body. Exercising every day after rest is important. Please do not do it when you are very fatigued or stressed. Even 10 minutes of exercise is enough and no overexertion for rapid weight loss. If you overexert, then also there is a negative consequence on immune, immunology 
And there's a lot of literature and scientific literature that points us to that today. And Acharya Sushrut said it 2000 years ago about how much to exercise and when to exercise. And he said, you exercise till half of your capacity, half of your strength. Just get moving and break a sweat if you can. Apart from all of this, the mental space and the mind is very crucial in Ayurveda. And how do we cultivate happiness on a day-to-day -day basis? How do we stay centered and grounded is something that we must ask ourselves. Happiness is a choice wherever in life we are. We have to carefully invest our energy in the most meaningful activities to survive, to maintain, and to grow. We need to cultivate contentment that I am enough. And from that contentment, we need to grow. So cleaning up in, in all of this, uh, all of these exchanges, uh, we find the interactions with the people we live and work with make a big difference. So cleaning up our interpersonal relationships, creating boundaries and protecting the self and having due consideration of the individuals we live with is also an important facet for health. There are three additional practices that we, which are very important for me to share. One is adequate vitamin D3. And although this is not directly from Ayurveda, but it is a derivative of Ayurveda when Ayurveda talks about uh, sun exposure and being out with nature. And these are not avenues that are available to us very easily these days. So if needed, taking supplements and not overdosing. Second is anathylam application in the nostrils is a good suggestion underneath the mask that we wear. Third is a daily gas reflex to stimulate the vagal nerve, and which is one of the traditional wisdoms to stimulate a very powerful vagal system, which controls the sympathetic and the parasympathetic parts of the body. And it is now increasingly recognized as an immune nerve. Many of the Ayurvedic shodhan processes try to influence it by Vamana and also to, to some extent through Virechana. So all you have to do is in the morning, you, use, you can use the back of your toothbrush uh, and, and gag by depressing the back of your uh, tongue. When you do that two or three times, the vagal nerve stimulates, all of your nasal paranasal sinuses clear up and you awaken like no coffee can wake you up. So with all of these practices, with all of these priorities, we can use Ayurveda to guide our daily decisions. And Ayurveda is nothing but a science and a guide which tells us what are the consequences of our choices, what are the costs of our choices, what are the benefits of our choices, and what are the risks of our choices. It is not prescriptive. It is educative in telling us what to do, what, what will lead, what a choice will lead to. So with that, I share with, the new, share with you one of my latest realizations that healthy life is a balance between being and becoming. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful World Ayurveda Day. Stay well and swasti swasti swasti